demonizing sugar and the opposite of shifting profit instead of actually finding a balanced solution. There has been a lot of talk about diet, including, excluding certain points, and it is necessary to look at the common sense points around this so that one do not end up harming your organs just in the interest of profiting in how you look and losing weight you may be one that is designed to have weight having weight or not having weight or fat is only the result of a self-interested society the, fa the functioning of the physical body though do not work according to how you look it functions according to a biochemical process it is a process that is based on a designed reality and it's not the same for everyone but the basic principles are the same for everyone if you obviously have damaged organs or liver disease for instance you will have specific reactions to food and food changes but you cannot use yourself as a benchmark because your organs are not functioning normally if others would follow your example they may cause the same harm or another form of harm simply because they're benchmarking their body to a body that's already damaged that does one should be careful for so let's look at the whole point in sugar the bitter truth the present presenter is a pediatrician that means it's somebody that works with children. That means it's somebody that works with new bodies before or in the beginning stages of damage. And what is clearly explained is that the body requires glucose, which is a sugar, which normally would come from various sources, but one of them is carbohydrates. And that the demon in the sugar family is the fructose and that which brings fructose if it is not balanced with enough fiber intake and that if you look at the biochemical processes it is regardless of what you eat there's going to be a little bit of damage from everything you do so one's got to go and look at these things very carefully and great self-honesty so that you do not end up placing yourself on the one or the other end of a situation but rather at a point that is going to support your body effectively so in this whole scenario we have a lab rat on the farm which is Paul six years type 1 diabetic and therefore he is subject to insulin injections and we adjusted the meals from a morning carbohydrate an evening no carbohydrate which caused immediately a side effect and even with him doing less than normal insulin he ended up the next morning in spite of trying to build up the point with fruit during the night at a very low level of sugar and that obviously is dangerous in itself and furthermore some interesting research that one should consider in a keto is it the ketones yep in a ketogenic scenario where you're burning fat there is a side effect that the body is producing more acid and that the ketones in fact become is quite poisonous when it reaches the bloodstream so there is certain points that one should consider around the chem biochemistry of the ketogenic point to be able to find a balanced point it will have an effect, a ketogenic point, on the 
creation of insulin because if you are no longer creating this or taking in the sugar which is from which the insulin response would come and you do that over a long period of time you are sending a message biochemically to your body that you no longer requires so much insulin or even insulin at all depending on the level that you have been involved in this your body will respond differently there are no hard and fast rules with these things you have to understand that your communication within the body is a chemical communication it is one of action response so to speak because you place in somebody the body respond to it and therefore you train your body over time to do certain things and from this perspective we've been testing the whole sugar point over time to to look at finding a balance especially because we have a lab rat here and looking at how to balance the point one of the important things about cellular construction that means how your body constructs new cells is that it requires fiber and therefore one must take in enough fiber every day otherwise obviously commonsensically if you do not have enough of the material from which something is built and you use minimal material you're going to end up with a weaker product that means if you don't take in enough fiber your cells will get weaker and that could have various side effects that will cause long-term effects and remember we're not talking now at short-term effects we're only lucky enough to have a lab right here that gives us immediate feedback in terms of any change in diet and how the body responds to it how the effect of the insulin is on it and um, whether the, the change actually affects the body effectively so if we go back to the beginning with Paul's diabetic process before he was diagnosed as a diabetic his body was eating fat and when there were no more fat it was eating flesh so he ended up very thin in actually in a dangerous position so much so that they had to take him overnight by ambulance to the hospital when they realized the real problem was not that he was losing weight the real problem was that he wasn't producing insulin so there was the body was still surviving because it was eating first the fat and then the flesh and that kind of created the smoke screen that there is it's still functioning I mean it must be some other disease while at the end of the day it was actually the insulin that wasn't produced and very quickly after insulin was introduced his body returned to normal weight uh, and um, started functioning normally so you've got to be really careful what you're playing with here in terms of this whole point and the potential damage to it it's important to realize that all parts within the body exist because it is functional within the system that you are existing in you cannot sidestep what is here without having a side effect that will affect your life extensively in the case of Paul for instance he took in too much fructose based sugar and he took it in conjunction with sport then he stopped sport but he didn't stop the sugar point and the sugar he was taking in was not the glucose part it was the fructose part the refined sugar that is uh, coming out of all kinds of other th things like corn syrup and uh, that caused massive damage to his organ and by the age of 16 he was a type 1 diabetic now the exact nature of these things are very difficult to establish because no proper records are kept of any person in this world at this stage to be able to build up a database from which we can have 
a complete trustworthy uh, view of every situation in the context of the total physical, biochemical being so that we can establish nutrition that's best for all based on a few simple considerations like blood type, um, sugar levels, intake, uh, speed of digestion, effectiveness of absorption and all the kind of things that is important. So I would suggest that one do not make any drastic changes to anything. A suggested point to change is to reduce your sugar intake from the perspective of plain sugar, sugars and from that perspective um, increase your fiber intake have your fat intake in so that there is a balance between the point reduce your fructose in every way possible understand though that the fructose from fruit is quite fine because the, it's balanced by the fiber that's in the fruit so fruit is in fact a balanced example of how nature take care of the systems that's here so fruit will give you a balanced product which is low fructose high fiber and that would does not have the damaging effect of high fructose low fiber so please slow down make sure that you do all the research and do not just look at the fact that you are losing weight the beginning stages of a diabetic is losing weight so that is a horrific thing to go through we are watching Paul's life his life is now in the hand of a needle and a sugar meter and regardless of him eating fat he can't survive he needs the sugar the body will not function without the glucose coming in you need some of it it is a problem situation and obviously also the acid point too much fat will again cause problems to your gallbladder over time not immediately you will have immediately a result that f supports your desire and that is to lose weight but in losing weight you are only presenting to yourself the image and likeness of the consumerism system the modeling system you are only producing that and you may even feel good from the perspective of having a better sex life I mean you eat more meat you're gonna have more sex that is a fascinating side effect of more, more meat it's not a side effect of anything else it's just meat will cause that and uh, therefore look at things with common sense consideration do not make drastic changes without considering the long-term side effects and the fact that you can't really predict the actual outcomes in time when we get to it we will do proper research and from that perspective do what's best do not completely remove your glucose intake so that you end up with other problems unforeseen like an ins insulin uh, production drop that cause damage or uh, a ketogenic acid uh, was it keto was it uh? ketoacidosis ketoacidosis this is what Paul says ketoacidosis which is the acid the result that happens and especially is very dangerous for diabetics that could cause like a toxic toxic shock as I understand it so careful also make sure before you start a diet that you go and measure your sugar over a period of time to see how you are dealing with uh, the situation that means how is your insulin production and um, do not jump in to long-term troubles we did this interview Paul will in time write more and more on all the things he's, he's an expert on having a dysfunctional organ and one can learn from that 
It is not something suggested for anyone.